What's going on everybody? Back with another video. So we just went down to Fall River to pick up this whole system right here. It was about a 45 minute drive from where I'm at. Um, we didn't get the card. I'll throw the ad up on the screen. We got the motherboard. We got the 10900K, um, 16 gigs of RAM, plus actually a, another stick, which was this single stick that came with it. Um, and this AIO cooler, which is an insane deal. The original ad was actually for $50 for all of this. And I just screwed down there. Usually I would film stuff like that, like going down to pick it up, but I just, I had no time to set up and do it. I had to run quick. So I felt like there was definitely something wrong with something of these parts. There's no way somebody just gives away the stuff for 50 bucks, even though that's what the guy said. But um, you guys tell me what you think is wrong after we turn it on. So this is the second post. Well, third or fourth, actually, at this point. Um, it did come with different fans. Either, these are the fans from the ad. Delete, delete, delete. And I can actually hear some noise coming from this pump. And uh, everything seems okay. But if you look at the temperature, you're going to notice that that temperature will continue to climb. And I'm going to do a little, I'm going to stop talking here and do a little tiny uh, time lapse. All right, I'm not gonna let it go any further. So as you can tell, it is definitely overheating because something is wrong with this Lee and Lee AIO. And this is not like a super old AIO or anything, like maybe 2021 was when that, this AIO came out. Um, it's definitely not under warranty because I don't have the receipt or anything unless Lee and Lee, you wanna send me another one. So uh, for now, we are gonna throw this onto that system to test it all, but I think everything is pretty much fine with the system itself. What I want to do is go and take this apart and see what's going on because I can actually hear inside something turning. It sounds like the pump is running. Maybe it's clogged. Uh, I don't know. So let's take this AIO off and actually open it up. Also, I'm going to throw this on here again. Right now, these are on sale for like 30 bucks. They have the little digital screen on them, too, that tells you the temperature. Pretty insane deal for 30 bucks. There's just no affiliation. I bought two of them, a white one and a black one. So we will throw that on after, but let's get this off first. Now what I want to do is essentially take this off. And, and unfortunately, so if you look right here, these are these like special nuts that are supposed to be, um, if they're like a one use only kind of thing and they're really annoying to get out. I forget what they're called. If anyone knows what those, those things are called, let me know. These three here and these three here are fine. So you got six good ones that are easy to get out. Just regular like torque or Allen key. I think that's an Allen key. And then these two are gonna be a little tough. I got a feeling that this is clogged. I could be wrong, but we're gonna open it up and see what's going on. All right, guys, I did damage the cold plate just a real tiny bit on the edge here. Not great, but uh, I did get them out. These are a pain in the ass to get out. I really wish Lee and Lee would not do that. Don't do this, Lee and Lee. What are you doing? All right, guys, time to take this cold plate off and see how bad it is. One thing that's very weird, though, is when I tilt this, there's almost zero liquid. Like, there's a lot of liquid missing in this pump. So I might actually fill this up because I feel like that's a problem. Also, it's very, very sticky. Like, this is terribly sticky. So let me get some Q-tips and try to clean this up a little bit, and then we'll add some more liquid to it and see if maybe it'll fix its problem. All right, we cleaned the plate. Um, this actually has an orientation, so I'm gonna have to look back and make sure I install it the correct way. I actually think uh, I scratched this side, so it should be... But the plate is actually keyed. I'm completely wrong here, and it's made that way so you can easily put it back together. This way here, but uh, I'll double check real quick before I put it back, and then... We're gonna put some of this Primo Chill liquid in. I know it's colored, doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna put a very small amount back into the pump. It seems to be low and like maybe that's the problem, but we'll figure it out. So I'm actually noticing something a little concerning. If I kind of shake around this, you're gonna see a lot of debris coming up. And that debris is something from in the cooler. So unfortunately, it seems like the glycol or whatever they use has like gotten sticky and thick and it's clogged the pump essentially. So I'm not gonna lie, I didn't use these back in the day. Uh, this is two years ago, but 
they've been out for a while and apparently like these things have been getting clogged for a long time and there's a lot of people talking about it um, it seems to be quite a popular issue and as you can see here this is seriously bad like i mean this looks a little bit like what i'm seeing somewhat not this bad but i feel like my aio that i have here was probably getting to that point um i don't know All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a really cheap cooler over here um, just for a few seconds, and we're gonna basically just hook this up to the pump section over here, which is the water pump, nothing else. Um, I don't even wanna put this near the computer just in case it leaks again or something happens, um, if it ever leaked before. I don't know why it's in the state it is, but let's uh, power it up and see if we can see if the pump is actually moving. Just gonna pop this cooler master cooler on. We're not even gonna attach it. Just put it like this, and we'll put a little weight on top of it. I'm gonna hit power on the system. I'm gonna put the microphone right next to the AIO. Let's see if, let's see if we can even hear anything. You heard a little bit of noise. I can definitely hear the pump moving. This is pretty sick, guys. It actually is working. Uh, 3,200-ish. 300 3300 rpms uh system fan 5 pump so yeah uh that worked whatever happened there um i'm not gonna put the those anti-tamper screws which by the way that's what they're called back in i'm gonna find a different screw but um let's put this back on the system and see if it starts climbing temperatures again so just as i was about to do that i started playing around with it and it started making a ton of noise and it's like there's definitely something a little weird with it. Like if you turn it one way, the RPMs slow way down. If you turn it up, the RPMs kind of speed up for a little bit and it tries to push the liquid. Uh, I'm afraid that this thing might be really clogged, but we're still gonna try it anyways, just to see what it, what it does when it's on the system. All right, we're gonna hook it up pretty much the exact same way we had it. I'm not gonna use expensive paste or anything, even though the CPU does require some decent paste. It is an i9, after all, even though it's only a 10 core. All right, so we're just gonna strap this back down. All right, everybody, it's in the same orientation. Uh, moment of truth, I guess. Can hear a little bit of liquid already. And I'm just gonna smash the delete button over here. We're seeing CPU temp 44. So hopefully that doesn't start, start climbing. 45, hmm. Maybe there's something wrong with the header? Because it's plugged into the CPU header. Let's see if we, uh... No, it's showing the CPU fan actually doing its job. It just seems a little bit high for this AIO, like it really shouldn't be this high. And obviously it's still spinning. I can feel movement in here. Let's see what happens if we just move the AIO upward. Temperatures are still pretty much the same. Um, let's get into Windows and do a few Cinebench runs just to see what happens. All right, check this out guys, I figured this out. Look at it climb right now, it's climbing like crazy. And the fans are starting to get louder. It keeps climbing, it keeps climbing. The pump is still working. Now, if I pick this up and shake this, ready? So I was trying to do this here, but having a hard time capturing it correctly. I got it to do it once, and then it kind of just kept getting hotter and hotter as time went on. Essentially, if you pick up the radiator and shake it a little bit, it alleviates some of that stuck liquid from all the gunk buildup, and you'll see a temperature jump way down and then immediately go way back up. And uh, it's because the AIO is just pretty much clogged. But uh, yeah, man, this thing is clogged like crazy. I might have to take it all apart. All right, guys, I'm switching over to the phone. Uh, I don't want to get my camera all wet. Look at how much gunk is coming up. Like this is all Lee and Lee's fluid, whatever they used. So let's just pour it out. All right, this, whatever this is, came out of there. 
All right, so it's been sitting here for a little bit now. Um, I am gonna try to refill it. I'm gonna use this Primo Chill stuff here. I don't have anything else on hand. I could use distilled water and like some antimicrobial stuff, but I really got nothing at the moment. I'm trying to just get this done quickly. Um, I'm either gonna do that or throw this away because if I can't get the pump to work, it's worth nothing, unfortunately. So let's fill it back up and then we'll give it another shot. Got this little drawer technique going on here too to hold it up. Should've did this in the first place. This is a very, very time consuming process. Just letting everyone know, because you have to keep moving the radiator just slightly like this. And then you'll see bubbles come up and it will go down. All right guys, so what I did is I hooked it up to a uh, PWM, sorry, PWM, Molex connector that goes to the fan connector. And we're just gonna run the pump at 100%. I tipped it off, I actually did this once before, before putting this on camera. Um, I'm only using four screws so I can get back into it just in case I have to add a little bit more liquid. And we're just gonna flick it on. And the pump is gonna run, you can hear it. It's gonna run at 100%, let me show you. So while we were waiting for the AIO to continue, I don't know, testing, whatever we were doing there, uh, my house was like 100 degrees, so I was putting these things up. And during that process, my wife was in here too, and that thing started to scream. I turned it off and tried to turn it back on, and it no longer turns on. Uh, I took it all apart, checked everything that I could. I think this thing is dead, guys. <laughs> And honestly, I don't think I'm gonna spend any more time on it because it's a waste of time. I'm just gonna salvage the fans. Uh, we're gonna throw that air cooler on here. And we still got a ridiculously good setup for extremely cheap. I mean, 60 bucks for an i9 motherboard and 16 gigs of RAM plus this one odd stick that they gave me is an insane deal. So let's just throw that CPU cooler on real quick and uh, boot into Windows. So I like to rate coolers on a scale from one to five on how hard they are to install, five being the hardest, one being the easiest. I would say that this is like a two, really simple to install, super fast, it took me less than five minutes. Um, and again, for $30, I really cannot complain about this cooler. Looks good, sounds good. All right, so we have this installed and unfortunately it's running at 100% because I had the pump running at 100% on the CPU header. But I'll give you this opportunity to hear the max noise that this cooler makes. Now let's restart the computer and fix that. All right, we are back up and running and we're sitting around 30 to 38, 40 range. Um, pretty quiet overall. Just real quick, I wanna show you guys how ridiculous the, uh, the setup here is. So this is my curvature for keeping it pretty silent. If I do easy tuning, look at this straight line gigabyte draws. So this is gonna be pure noise. It's just a straight line. So cancel that, we're gonna hit F10. There we go, save and exit. And now we will have a very, very silent cooler. We're gonna do one Cinebench run just to see what the score is. Fresh startup, no apps, no other ap applications are open. And uh, yeah, let it run through. So we're pulling 321 watts from the wall. It's pretty high. And according to Google, we should have somewhere between a 17,000 and an 18,000 score. Ooh, it's a little bit on the low side. Actually, according to Google, it seems to be anywhere from 15,000 to 17,000 is the average. So as you can see there, we're doing okay. I gotta say, I really love this little uh, temperature thing here on the top of this cooler. For $30 right now on sale, I'll put this down in the description. Again, not affiliated, um, really cool little uh, reading thing there. This is the software, it's a little bit annoying, kind of goofy looking, a huge thing. You can switch from GPU to CPU, but hey, it's pretty accurate. I take away from this whole experience. Well, I knew something was gonna be bad. Um, that's not really the big deal, because that was such a good deal. $60 for all of that stuff is like insane. Uh, but this kind of comes down to this AIO stuff. And what I've learned from the companies producing AIOs as time goes on, is that they're all kind of liars and all of them end up having one or two that really end up with some sort of problem, whether it be clogging. And by the way, according to the internet, I didn't look this up until after, 
this thing has huge problems. Any of the early Galahad AIOs have clogging issues like no other. Um, MSI had similar issues, NZXT, like all the different brands have had issues with their AIOs. Air coolers, you don't really have that issue. And I'm a water cooling guy. I actually do like custom loops. Like I'm really into that stuff. But if you're a little bit nervous about this outcome, definitely stick with an air cooler or a reputable brand that has a long history of not having failures. I can't even really think of one that I would highly, highly recommend. Any of the really, really cheap ones that you see on Amazon, like, I don't know, if you're building a cheap system, like a thermal right, I think they're okay. But if you're gonna build something like kind of expensive, go with like an Arctic or, or even Corsair, which I don't even love Corsair, but Corsair has had some pretty good reliability. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna rip these fans off here. And uh, unfortunately, this is probably gonna go in the trash. I wish I could like reutilize the radiator, but I really can't. And because this just won't turn on anymore, like it was actually working and now it's just completely dead. Um, I think it just like went out with a bang. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what to do with it. If anyone wants it, Come pick it up in the Boston area. I'll, I'll let you have it. Anyway, uh, like, subscribe. I'll see you guys in another video. Bye.